et tout près. Welcome, everyone. Uh, this is Frederick Winsnest, uh, and uh, we have a little bit of audio issues today. Um, did uh, you? Uh, should I go back uh, real quick here? Sorry. Uh, we're excited to have uh, both uh, Norwegian Refugee Council and Workplace for Good today. Uh, talking about bot automation for good. Uh, but before we get it underway, I want to uh, make sure we just go over the normal housekeeping uh, efforts or issues. Uh, let's um, make this as interactive as possible. So please open your, the chat uh, window in WebEx and post your questions there for a facilitated Q&A session towards the end of the hour. Uh, we are also recording this as uh, usual, and uh, you'll be seeing a follow-up email from us with a link to the recording and uh, the slides and everything uh, towards the end of the day today. At the very end of the session, uh, after you close the WebEx, you will be presented with a uh, webinar satisfaction poll, and we would uh, hope that you can spend a couple of minutes to answer the questions uh, and um, help us improve this uh, webinar series as we go forward. Uh, with that, uh, I do want to, to uh, introduce the speakers today. We have Eric Schoeler from uh, Norwegian Refugee Council, and we have Annette uh, Gavert from uh, Workplace for Good at Facebook. And uh, without any further ado, I'll just pass it on to you, Annette. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, and yes, welcome everyone to this webinar. My name is Annette Gavert. I'm head of Workplace for Good. Um, and um, yeah, I'll just do a very quick introduction of what Workplace actually is and particularly what Workplace for Good is. Um, and then I'll pass it over to Peter to actually share um, what um, he and his team at uh, the NRC have actually been doing uh, in regards to bot automation. So um, moving forward um, on the slides actually, um, if you look at Workplace, um, then it does look and feel in the same way actually as um, as Facebook does. So if you've seen Facebook, um, then this will look pretty familiar. Um, so Workplace actually connects entire organizations um, to bring everyone in the organization together. Uh, it's a dedicated and secure space for people in organizations to connect, communicate, and collaborate. So it's totally separate from consumer Facebook. So it's separate profiles, separate logins. You don't even need to have a Facebook login to use Workplace. But it combines the familiar Facebook features and the enter enterprise integrations to get work done. Um, so because it's so familiar to Facebook, uh, it comes really with this news feed with relevant tailored information um, and lots of features that you're already um, familiar with um, but they are used in a different context, actually, when we're talking about the workplace. So it turns previously one-sided communication in an organization into a dialogue. And because it's a tool that is used by some 2 billion people that already know how to use it, you can ensure a super rapid deployment and adoption. So what is then Workplace for Good on the next slide? Um, when we launched Workplace about two years ago, and we've seen thousands of nonprofits and educational institutions transform the way they work on our platform. Um, and we want to match that commitment of doing good with our own. And that's why we launched in June this year, Workplace for Good. We, we really build Workplace to give the world a, a place to work together. And that means businesses of all shapes, sizes, and industries, but not just businesses that work better, smarter, and faster with Workplace. Um, so we've always believed that the greatest work has the greatest purpose. And this is why we created Workplace for Good. It's a global program, a central hub 
that combines information, use cases, getting started guides. Um, all together, they're for you, for all nonprofits and educational institutions globally. So you can build meaningful communication and create change around the world. So for you, all registered nonprofits, Workplace is donated free of charge from the first to the very last user. And if we go further, there, what we see, there are typically three different ways in which organizations use Workplace. And it doesn't have to always follow the same journey. And the three different ways are broadcast, so sharing information and receiving bottom-up feedback, to collaborate, meaning managing teams and collaborating as communities. And the third one is to automate, making business processes more efficient, for example, via bots. Um, and that's obviously the, the theme for today. So let me just quickly walk you through um, a few examples on each, each one of those. If we talk about broadcast, um, and then if we go even one farther there, there mainly is three features that people mostly like, and that is live video, a chance that lets you broadcast to either your whole business or just in a team. Some organizations use this to deliver training, for example. And before workplace, many organizations required their coworkers to be physically present to attend live events. Um, but for example, uh, the It Gets Spreader project is now using live video to actually bring everybody into their annual conference um, that previously was only limited actually or exclusively available to their top leadership. So it opens up new ways of communicating. And open groups help the organization to, uh, to come together. Um, you can share and posts and updates for the entire organization. And then the news feed, in the same way as you might know it from Facebook, brings them together the most important, the most relevant things for me as an individual user. It's very personal. It gets to know me. It's smart. It tries to prioritize those things that I need to take care of that I need to know about in the in like uh, at the top so um, if I only have five minutes I would like this to be like the most the most relevant information um, right at the top so that, those are the key features around broadcast talking then about collaboration um, very different to Facebook on workplace actually work happens inside groups so groups are the place to get work done on workplace. They can be used for updates, announcements, gathering feedback, and, and most importantly, for teamwork and collaboration. They can, in the same way as on Facebook, they can be open groups, they can be closed or secret groups. Um, and in groups, you can share files, um, you can discuss them, um, and, and really prepare your work until you're ready to share it with a wider team. Um, and you can manage access. Um, through different different forms. There, there are specific types of groups as well, and this one here is actually a multi-company group that includes, that can, or can include people from other organizations. And a lot of nonprofits I work with, they use multi-company groups, for example, to bring their volunteers closer to the organization. Again, in a secure and private space to collaborate. Uh, it's also often used for um, collaborating with external partners, such as maybe your corporate sponsors. So UNICEF in the UK, for example, is using multi-company groups um, for all of their partnership that they have with EasyJet. So multi-company groups extends the work of collaboration actually beyond your organization, bringing in people from other organizations into the same work environment but they don't have access to what your staff is internally discussing about. So it's a specific form of group. And then lastly, there is a workplace chat. Um, so in the same way as you might know Messenger, so Facebook Messenger, workplace chat is really for the instant messaging. It can be text messages, but it can also be voice and video calls for the team. Um, so the video calling works with up to 50 people. So you can join people and teams and bring them together wherever they are in the world. And this is all part of uh, Workplace Premium, which you as a nonprofit um, are getting donated free of charge. 
So this is the second part. So we, had, we came from broadcast, collaborate. Now the third part is automating. Um, and this is really to use Workplace to integrate with your existing enterprise tools, um, such as some of the ones that you can see here. So you can fully integrate Workplace into your existing application landscape, uh, making it easy for people to sign on with, for example, single sign-on, but then adding integrations. This can be content integration. They can be for uh, specific custom integrations. Workplace comes with 50 out-of-the-box integrations that um, just by a click of a button you can activate um, and then you can add on to those out-of-the-box integrations your specific ones. Uh, and this, was, this is now what brings me to the bots, actually, and this is also my, my last slide. So um, when we're talking about bots, it's really to make work and everyday activities easier. Um, so with um, bots can really automate and simplify daily daily workflows. Um, here, here are a few examples that are picked out. Um, so, for example, Chas is an organization here in uh, in Scotland, um, and I'm London based, so that's one thing here. Um, so they um, they launched an employee survey bot instead of sending out emails and asking people to sign up to a specific application. Um, there's now a, a bot that comes via the chat. Um, application and since they introduced it, they've received four times higher participation rates than before. Oxfam is using a bot just to explain commonly used abbreviations. They call it the Oxbot um, as really a jargon buster. Again, bringing people together, helping to overcome communication challenges and making it easier, particularly for new members of the team, to not feel left out. Emergency response, um, so here an example from a for-profit organization, but I know a lot of different organizations are using it, the safety officer, which is actually, um, if you're familiar with the safety check on Facebook, that is the equivalent here in workplace. So when something happens somewhere, really making sure that you account for all of your employees that are in the region, making sure that those people that need help, those employees that that, that need help that are in, in potentially a disaster region can be identified very quickly and then the help being coordinated. And lastly, there's a volunteer FAQ bot uh, that CHAS has developed that just quickly gives information on commonly asked questions. Um, and since then, actually, CHAS has seen a much higher involvement of volunteers and they have actually reached far, far quicker than they thought their um, their fundraising target for this year. So just some examples of how bots can be used, but um, now I'm handing over to Peter because he has some really fantastic ones. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody, um, and welcome to this session. I'm very delighted to talk about bots because this is probably my favorite topic. Um, I'm going to talk about briefly about who we are. I'm going to talk a bit about uh, the first bot we developed, Norbot, and then I'm going to spend more time on the lessons learned because I think that's the most important thing probably. Uh, for those who don't know us, uh, we are the Norwegian Refugee Council. That was a bit too fast. Go back to one slide. We are the Norwegian Refugee Council and we are helping people forced to flee in hard to reach areas across the world. Uh, change, please. Um, the Norwegian Refugee Council has three main pillars, humanitarian assistance, as we talked about before, advocacy, making sure that the world knows what's going on, and expert deployment, NORCAP, which is uh, the section of the pillar that I sit in and where we have been developing the bots. Change. Um, we had a challenge. We have a challenge. We are in, in NORCAP, we are deploying five to 600 international humanitarian experts to mainly UN across the world. So we are kind of a manpower of the UN and more. Uh, all these people are sent out very fast. Uh, they go to often very challenging areas. Um, the better prepared they can come, uh, the better. And the more better for us, the better for the UN, and better for the people they we need to assist. So this is a challenge. Next slide. Um, I was asked to say a little bit about bots because uh, these expressions, they, they fly around in the air. Uh, the one I like a lot, I can't remember where I stored it from, 
uh, I think it uh, might be Facebook, a bot is a piece of software that humans can interact with as if it's another human. I think this is a clear and simple. Um, it's, it uh, shortcuts a lot of learning. If you can just use your normal human interaction skills to interact with software, then you don't have to learn a lot of systems, remember a lot of passwords, and so forth and so forth. So that's the charm of the bot. Uh, a workplace bot is software integrated into workplace that users and systems can interact with. So now we are talking about a, a piece of software that we use in, in workplace to do different tasks. Um, one thing about workplace bots, they, they are similar to bots in, in Facebook, but workplace bots are more powerful. In, face, in Facebook, you have chat bots, but in workplace bots, you can actually do things on the platform. You can do some administration, you can promote things, you can ask them to do a lot of work. And work is the key word here. Um, another big advantage for us to using Workplace and Facebook uh, and bots is that it's a, it's a known environment. Our users already know Workplace. Uh, I should say we launched Workplace back in April 2016. Uh, so more than two years now, our users are very familiar with the context. Uh, they interact with each other using the chat. So introducing a, a bot that interacts with the user using the workplace chat is very simple. We don't have to do uh, design new screens or interfaces or do much training. So now it gets complicated. <laughs> uh, so as I mentioned before, our, in NORCAP we deploy experts to the UN. We have a, a long process that has to be implemented fast and correct every time. The, last, the, the left column you see, we receive a request for an expert from the UN. We have a big database system where we identify the experts. We sign contracts. We make sure they have medical checks. We find work visa if they need. We uh, brief them before deployment. And then we found out with Workplace, as we started in 2016, that if we created a, a local group or, uh, for a cluster of countries, co countries where we put people in who are deployed to these countries or are going to be deployed to these countries, then they were very helpful to watch each other with information. What happens often is that we would get questions uh, in Oslo, where we know a lot, but not everything, especially not when the situation is, is rapidly changing on the ground. Say, a person is going to be uh, deployed to UNICEF in South Sudan. Uh, they will ask us a lot of questions. We have not worked with UNICEF before. They have not been in South Sudan before. What should I prepare? What should I, what should I bring and so forth? We get all these questions in, in Norway 600 times a year. Uh, we cannot answer them all in full. But if we connect people who are in the field, who has up-to-date information, they can help each other. So we started doing this manually and had uh, amazing uh, feedback from, from this. People were so helpful in the field. They were uh, into the minute details, where not to take a taxi, where to, where to change money. So really in, very, very helpful deploying on a workplace group. And finally, we deploy them to the receiving organization. Uh, this is all very well. Uh, it takes time. It takes us about uh, two weeks to go through this. And honestly, deploy to workplace is not the top priority con uh, compared to signing a contract or making sure that the medical checks are in order or the work visa. So it often comes at the end of the line. That's why I put it in the bracket. And it comes very late. What we want to do is we want to do it very fast in the process. We want to do it every time and correctly this time. Um, I should say also when we deploy to workplace, we post in a group saying, here is Peter. He's going to work with uh, UNICEF in South Sudan as a child protection expert. Please um, extend any advice you have uh, for him. And then we tag the people who are already in South Sudan. For instance. So all this process also took time. You have to put the person in the group, you have to write the post, you have to check who is in South Sudan at the moment, you have to go back and you have to tag them and so forth. Um, altogether, we think it took about 15, 20 minutes. So when the opportunity came to develop a bots in workplace, we, that was in spring 2017, we started thinking this is what we would like to automate some of these standard processes, rule-bound processes. Uh, how can we do that? And we had some discussions back and forth with uh, Facebook partner Cloudworks here in, in Oslo and Facebook to find the right angle to, to do this. And their advice were wisely, uh, do it very simple. Start with the most simple but real function you can, you can look at. 
uh, and then you can, you can work from there because it's very easy to get over uh, to overreach and do too many things and not get anything done. But start real. So we we um, decided on the function, um, the one I just talked about. We developed a bot. Uh, many discussions about the bot. The look of the bot. Should it had a should they have a persona? Should it not? Um, I'll get back to that later. We call it Norbot or Norcap bot or not just Norbot. And it could take over this process of of uh, deploying people on workplace. So what it does uh, when people are identified, it sends a chat message to the to the manager saying, "Do you need help to deploy a workplace?" If they say yes, uh, the person is added to the sub-regional group, for instance, uh, Central Africa. It informs the person you have been applied to this group. This is what you can use it for. But it also posts the welcome message I talked about before that it generates automatically with the the right data merged in and with the right peers in country mentioned or tagged. And finally, it does uh, post a small uh, technical log uh, about how, what it's done. So this gives us, um, and second, second these gets local context much faster. Maybe they will have two days, now they have for instance, two weeks to, to discuss with local peers and, and, and prepare and, and read the documents that are needed and, and bring the right things. Uh, um, uh, really a big help. Uh, interestingly, the people in the, in, the, in the field get peer recognition. They are very happy to help. Uh, sometimes they feel lonely in the field. Um, and communicating via workplace gives them a uh, social network. It gives them uh, yeah, peer recognition among the peers. Uh, our receiving agencies, our partners, get a better of bad experts because they have time to prepare. They also have like a social network locally, so they're not only depending on them. Uh, for us in Oslo, it gives us less, much less administrative work. Uh, we'll see that later. Uh, all these questions, I'm only calculating the time we save in not doing this, but I cannot calculate all the questions we don't get because they ask each other. And finally, which is one of our objectives also, is we start, got started with bots, we got started with automation. We, 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 we get our fingers dirty with automation and get learning. So that was also an important thing for us. Next slide, please. So early robot results. Um, so it saves about 20 minutes of administrative work per second, um, and also a lot of questions. So for 550 deployments a year, it saves us about 180 hours of work. Uh, new certain counties are, are connected much faster. As you see in the top screen, that's a typical uh, technical message. It says the things it did, and it said it took me three seconds to co complete this process. What took 20 minutes before? Uh, much faster results. Uh, we see significant, significantly increased communication between uh, the, our secondies in the field. Uh, so uh, we can only monitor the, 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 the post and the response to the post, but we assume that they also continue with the chat communication internally. Uh, next slide, please. Here's an example. We launched the uh, Nobot in September last year, and it coincided with the Rohingya crisis, where six to seven hundred thousand uh, Rohingyas uh, fled from Myanmar to uh, Bangkok and settled on the border areas in Cox's Bazar. So we sent a large number of experts, I believe it was thirty something, to various UN agencies in in the area, and they were sent out rather quick. They were all introduced by Nobot, and you see in the left column. column you see the kind of uh, message we were posted in the local group for uh, for the area. So, Hokan will shortly be deployed to IOM in Bangladesh as a construction site, site planner. Please welcome Hokan and extend any advice that may be useful. And then it was tagging the people in 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 Cox Bazar, and it, this was done many times for each for everyone. Next column, you see how people start to respond, which I find amazing. Um, the same message, and you see the responses. Welcome. Uh, if you come from Dhaka to Cox, you have to get a visa here, and, and, and these kind of things. They have the communication going, uh, all for a simple little uh, bot message that started all this. Finally, we see on the last column, we see that uh, we send people in many different areas education, gender, shelter, uh, and so forth, going to different UN agencies. So they might not meet each other. During the stay in Cox's in the work 
uh, context. But here in, in to the left, we see there is an education in emergency expert who, who had a me meeting for the education group, and he brought in his colleague from uh, GenCap, uh, so a gender expert, to kind of enrich the meeting. So they got to know each other via Nobot, and they can cross silos between education and gender and design better programs, which I think is where we want to go. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so we're a little bit into the learning. Staff reactions were amazing. We'll talk more about this later. Uh, probably because they're used to interact with other humans on the chat, they they kind of took it up and continued talking with the bot in the same way. So they were inviting uh, Nobot to the bar and giving compliments, and poor Nobot couldn't understand all this and said, sorry, I don't understand. Please use the bot. Um, very interesting effect. We also played with this, of course, in the, in the way we designed the bot. So if people said uh, no to the assistance, uh, the bot will say, uh, understand that and say, um, you're on your own, good luck, human. Somebody got a little bit accepted. Um, next slide, please. Next slide. Great. A little bit of the technical. This is very short, but we have a, uh, one of the developers is on this line, so if there's more questions, we can go into details. Basically, nobody is developed in JavaScript. It's hosted at NRC's Azure instance, um, so it's all in-house, so to speak, all go cloud. Uh, it's triggered from our Rustler and deployment management system, so we have a database where we process all these deployments, and when a person is identified, it triggers the bot with all the information of where they're going, who they are, who else is in the country, and so forth. And it's sent it to the bot that processes it, and then interacts with workplace via their books, which is workplaces communication tool. Um, no one versus one, as I'm talking about now, was developed uh, by a Norwegian uh, Facebook part or workplace partner called Cloudworks, and Nobot version two, uh, second version we're using now, was developed by Visual World, uh, which is a German software company. Uh, we have secured, <laughs> secured that the source code is uh, will be open source, uh, so we have the rights. Uh, but the developers say they are not just ready at the moment because they're doing things clean. But if you're interested in the source code, source code, code let us know and we can uh, help you get started where we are, so you don't have to start all over. Um, next slide, please. Learning point one. Um, I talked a little bit about this before, but it's very important when you start with what starts start small but real. And this is an example of how we started um, database to bot, bot to manager, and then there was a bot human dialogue or just a, a quick button. At the time, we called it, I feel lucky. Uh, so, so this is uh, really important. You can always build second phase, third phase, fourth phase. You can always add, but starting small and make it work is key. Next slide, please. Planning and prototyping is also important. Um, you see here some of our plans um, jumps back and forth depending on how people answer to the questions. Um, we were very focused in the beginning on a, a human bot dialogue, which for our purposes turned out to be less important because people just want to get work done. But we spent quite some time with Cloudworks on this uh, dialogue and they can say yes or no, and what if they say no, uh, then they will jump back. Um, this had to be planned well, well from the beginning because People will test the system. They will try to do uh, things you don't expect. So prototype, test, plan, go back, reschedule. Next slide, please. Um, yes, so we learned the hardware, as I mentioned. We had a lot of dialogue, um, as you see in the screen next onto the right. Uh, it had the three buttons. You want help? No? Yes, type step by step. Or yes, do all as I feel lucky was called at the end. Um, they, we saw that repeat users will only use a step by step once or twice, and then they will go to yes, do all. Uh, it's, it's very nice to have the, the process and understand what is going on step by step, but they really just want to move on and get it done. 
to the left, you'll see kind of our process in our database system. So we acknowledge the, or we trigger the bot from the database system, SQL Server, and send the data via API to the bot on Azure. Uh, next slide, please. Another surprise for us was that our users were in, in Oslo was mainly using WordPress on their desktops. Uh, so all the, the processing and so on, always desktop. But when they got a chat notification from the, the bot, they, they grabbed their mobile and they communicate on the mobile, uh, which was a surprise for us and something um, we're not sure why they do it. It's uh, But it's very interesting and it's something we had to think about in the next slides, I'll show you. Next slide. Yeah, so a lot of the communication we had designed for the, uh, the, the desktop, uh, a lot of text that doesn't look so much if you have a uh, white screen, but if it really comes out on, on mobile, it's far too much. So what we had to do, one of our important learning points was to keep the text really small, don't have a lot of explanation explanatory text rather linked to a, a group or a document in workplace where you can also easier edit and update the text and maintain the text. Uh, in version two, we suddenly cut, cut down on all this text. Um, next slide, please. Personality matters. As I said before, we discussed a bit, a lot in the beginning, should it have a personality and if a personality, what kind of personality? We finally settled on a dandelion flower uh, with a face and our trademark cap for NORCAP. Um, this had proved again very useful. We, you see the three faces there could, could uh, signal different, uh, different moods, very basic. Um, there was a problem with the bot over Christmas and it was not uh, firing correctly. We changed the picture to the, to the sick bot and instead of people say, oh no, software doesn't work again, IT always a problem, we got all the comments like, oh, poor Norbot, I hope you will get well soon, and so on. A, a very different emotional response on the same message. Same when we reach some target, we could change it with the, with the kiss and, and make it a little bit more happy. So uh, in, a learning point for us is personality definitely matters, and it makes it easier to communicate the state of the bot or the, the purpose of the bot. Um, yes, quick learning point seven. For us, uh, there are many companies and partners offering bots. For us, we were a bit concerned about where the data was. If we build the bot ourselves, it stays on our Azure platform. It, it communicates only with the workplace. Communication is encrypted. Uh, so we felt we had more control uh, than not, but it's, it depends on the partner who builds the bot and, and hosts the bot. Next slide, please. So these were quick learning points now um, we learned last year. Um, and this year we have moved on and we have made a uh, NoBot version 2 uh, based on all the learning we did. Um, and basically NoBot version 2 has more tasks we have added on various tasks, pre-deployment tasks, access to documents, um, descriptions, announcements. Uh, so it does even more real work now. As I mentioned, because of the mobile interface, it has much less text. Um, we have managed to cut it down a lot. And security, of course, GDPR and so forth. We are not uh, posting any welcome messages if, unless people have opted into data sharing from our data system. Likewise, we're not tagging anybody with the bot unless they have opted into data sharing. Um, it, people can be sensitive, it can be sensitive where people are. Um, we do not use the bot if it's a sensitive area. Uh, we don't use the bot at all. Um, and yeah, we are very, uh, very focused on not sharing data that should not be shared in any way. And that is also the role of the bot to help that is uh, implemented each time and we don't make mistakes, human mistakes. We have also created a new bot we call Norma, uh, Data Maintenance, which um, maintains data on the workplace. Uh, its task at the moment is quite simple. Uh, it maintains personal details and group memberships. But um, for instance, we will also use it for um, 
anonymizing people after they leave NRC. Uh, again, complying with GDPR. This is something that NOMA can do, and many other tasks we will, we will give it as we go along. And the, the, our latest baby is Bbot. It's a survey bot, like Annette also talked about. Um, we found survey being a bit too cold, and we are having this flower uh, garden image. So we found that Bbot was a better name for a survey bot that collects data and, and gives some information back. What Bbot will do is, again, use the, the workplace chat interface to contact people who are who are seconded in the field and ask them basic questions that we need for, for following up on the project. Uh, it will be some, normally we ask them to write long mission reports, but here we will, uh, we just started, so I should say, uh, there will be relatively short answers, mainly uh, key performance indicators that we then can process uh, automatically and show, visualize uh, via Power BI uh, so that we can, what before took we have a long time to write long mission reports where we actually only need a few key data. Uh, we get the key data in, we can process it, we can request the report automatically, the bots can also do that, get the data, process it more it's automatically with some data correction, and visualize it almost real time. So this is where we're going now, um, being much more proactive, reaching out to the field with our bots, where the other bots were mainly uh, headquarters bots. Um, next slide. So this wraps up uh, our experience and lessons learned. Um, there is much more. Um, if you want to hear more about what we have done, um, um, it's a very interesting field and it moves very fast. Uh, this is an it is an, a, <clears throat> a picture from from the north of Brazil, border to Venezuela, where indigenous people are fleeing the situation in Venezuela to uh, Brazil, where we have one of our people there using Nobot, coincidentally, uh, in the picture. So I will um, get back to, I will open up for Annette, if you want to say something before we go to questions. Thank you. No, thank you, Peter. I think there were a few questions. So, um, Frederick, do you want to read through those questions? Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, there was a lot of questions and a lot of uh, enthusiasm, and uh, people are clearly impressed with this and uh, uh, very interested in getting engaged. Uh, the first question that came in was, uh, what type of technical support does Facebook provide to get started with these bots? Yeah, and I, I can take that. So, if you see the link that is here shared, actually, for Workplace for Good, that takes you directly to our developer pages specifically for integration. So that, that explains what is available, like how our API interface looks like. And then there's also an integration directory. And that brings you to the, bot, the bots that are already, let's say, ready made. So, some, so Facebook doesn't build any, any bots in the same way as on, as on, on consumer Facebook. Um, there's a partner ecosystem and we have fantastic workplace partners actually that, that help with building bots. Um, so Facebook provides the API, the interface, um, and that is uh, very well explained here on, um, on this developer pages if you follow this link. Um, and then some of the partners have built um, some of the bots. So the one I mentioned earlier, the safety officer, for example, that helps you ensure where your employees are and making sure they're okay in case of a uh, disaster somewhere. Uh, that is actually a, a bot that is available and is provided by the partner free of charge in the first year. So there are a few examples like that. Um, if you already have a partner that helps you build messenger bots, um, that partner can easily build on Workplace with the same functionality and, and technology behind it. Um, and otherwise on our website you find um, our, um, like the workplace specific partners that can help with that. Or if you don't, if you do get stuck and you can't find anything, please just shoot me an email. Can I, can I, can I just add to that, that also in, in workplace, we have a multi-company group, a developers group, where a lot of questions, technical questions are shot back and forth. And, and, and both actually Facebook developers and other developers around the world are, are coming with solutions and answers to ideas. Very good group to follow. 
Yeah, that's true. I'm sure. Fantastic. Our team of supposed to, 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 yeah. to, to help and and and, uh, and to be a, a mediator and in between. So um, of course, I'm happy to help make introductions. Sorry for that. Great. I posted uh, the um, links from the slide in the chat window, and we'll make sure that that information is also included in the follow-up email that we send to uh, people who are interested in this this topic. So the, ne the next question that came in um, was about language. Do you have experience with working with chatbots in any other language than English? Uh, no. And uh, first of all, our, our main need is, is English for this uh, lingua franca for the experts we send to the UN. Um, and also, uh, we mainly have responses back with uh, in, in buttons, to keep it simple, at least with no bot, the bot is a little bit different. Um, that said, um, it cannot be very difficult to make a translation of the bot text into different languages and have similar operation. Uh, once it works in, in one language, it, um, it should be able to work in any. Yeah, if I, if I may jump in. So, uh, Workplace is available in, in loads and loads of different languages, and hence the bots can also be developed in different languages. They can also speak multiple languages, depending on how you set them up. It, they could automatically reach out the specific locale of um, a user, so picking up their preferred language and displaying the bot in, in their specific language, depending on how many you want to set up. Um, or you give a user a, a choice right at the beginning in which language they want to have the dialogue um, running. I know there are, there are quite a lot of workplace um, partners or organizations um, using, using bots specifically in APAC, so in, in Asia, um, one of them being AirAsia, um, and they work in lots of different um, countries and languages, um, and I'm pretty sure that there are some organizations that have built bots in different languages. This is fantastic. I uh, uh, also um, would encourage other people to uh, to uh, place questions in the uh, chat window. We have a few more minutes here and a couple more questions that I'm going to cover, but if you uh, want to uh, ask some more questions, please uh, uh, post them there. Uh, the next question was a little more kind of system oriented. Uh, you mentioned SQL Server, Peter. Uh, can you discuss the types of backend systems that you use in your solution? <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> only on the surface. Um, so we have a, a database system that is uh, based on Microsoft SQL Server, SQL Server uh, database. And that's where we have all our data and all our processes and so on. So in, in this SQL Server, we have a trigger not when a, and a, a secondment reaches a certain stage in the, in, in the process, it triggers uh, it's an API that sends data to the, the bot and the bot wakes up with this data and it starts um, contacting the responsible manager on chat. Do you need help to deploy? Uh, the bot itself is is um, building JavaScript, as I mentioned. Um, I, I don't know so much about the system, but, but it's also based on the same uh, Azure instance. So we keep the, the data locally there, the communication between the SQL server and the bot, and the, the, the encrypted data between the bot and, uh, and the workplace. I hope this answers it. Otherwise, please uh, email me, and I will forward it to the developers. So it, it sounds like you had automated processes already built into SQL Server in the past, and what you basically used this bot for was to create a more user-friendly and, um, uh, and more efficient methodology to talk to the end users. Exactly, exactly. Uh, our SQL Server is getting older, and it is, the interface is not as nice as it could be. Uh, moving the communication and interaction away from the database and into a workplace that is built for, for humans to communicate, we actually create a, a new interface for our SQL Server where the users can, can do limited but uh, real tasks. So in a way we see also, we, we, we say that, that um, uh, workplace well for connecting our, our, our staff and having to collaborate 
many ways, automations is a way of, and integrations is a way of connecting our systems into the same system, into one place and help them uh, collaborate with humans. Exactly. Excellent. Yeah, that, what you were talking about in terms of data collection and uh, um, the, the, the B interface and all that sounds very exciting in terms of what you're doing in the future. There was the last question uh, around the use of, of uh, bots. Uh, uh, somebody were very excited that this is awesome. Have you created bots for orienting uh, or onboarding new hires? Uh, no, we haven't. We have thought about it. Uh, in a way, this is an un uh, nobot is an onboarding bot because uh, we have recruited people who are on a roster and we second them to the UN when the the, the right position uh, comes up for them. So in a way, it's a kind of a re-onboarding them to the UN, but very simple. I know several uh, Facebook partners have created onboarding bots, and I I believe that there's a huge potential there starting with an onboarding bot and then having maybe a, a personal assistance bot throughout your, your lifespan of the organization. So, but that's a bigger task and <laughs> we are one year old in bot development, so we are, we are not there yet. Well, it all has to start somewhere, so this is fantastic. Uh, well, we, we have a few more minutes left. Again, if you have a question, please post it in the chat window. If not, Annette, I don't know if you have any um, closing comments. I think there was one additional question that you posted to everyone. Um, I, I can just read it out, which was, who is the best person to link up with in NSC if I want to know more about your bot? Oh, that's me. You have my contact details in the final screen. Uh, email me. Uh, I would love to talk about bots. And especially for nonprofits as us, I think the more we share of information, the more we are, we are not so restricted as commercials. Uh, it gives us a great opportunity to not start from scratch each time, but start from the from the opposition, basically, and, and help each other to to do to do good. Yeah. So feel free to contact me. Thanks, Peter. I mean, I can. I Thank can, you very I, much, Annette. I appreciate you catching that. <laughs> um, I can just <laughs> add. I mean, for me, I think um, bots are, are a really simple way of of making everybody's life a little bit easier at work um, and if we can make people a little bit more efficient um, take away like repetitive non-fun things in the daily work and just make them a bit happier i think that's really um ultimately kind of what the objectives would be and that that brings a big difference into an organization I mean, at, at Facebook, we might be a bit uh, crazy about this, but we have more than 100 bots that um, we have in the organization. That is from um, a visitor registration. So someone comes to visit me, comes to re registration, or kind of our re reception registers there. I get a quick chat message just saying, hey, this and this person is here to come and see you. Um, and I have just three buttons. I can say, okay, great, I'll be down in a minute or um, sorry, I'm a little bit delayed, or um, actually, I don't know who that is. Um, so a very simple way of just kind of giving me a chance while I might be in another meeting still, uh, just to, to give a message out. Um, so there are so many ways of, of using chatbots. Um, the, it's like a very simple one as well that doesn't actually need any kind of integration is that um, as Delore shared with me here in the UK, um, they have about 10,000 people staff. A lot of them are actually in, uh, well, in, in retail staff, so really in the stores everywhere. Um, and many of them are also part-time workers. And their HR team gets every year 4,000 requests in just asking when the next payday is because sometimes the payday falls on a Saturday or a Sunday and they want to know is like, do I get paid on the Friday or the Monday? Now, how easy could that be to just answer this with a chatbot that has 12 dates in a year and it doesn't actually require any integrations with anything um, and makes everybody so much happier. The person that actually wants the information and the HR team that doesn't need to answer those 4,000 requests. So I'm sure like there, there are a lot of ideas that are coming up in your minds now. Um, if you want to know anything more, like how to do them, or if that is possible at all, 
or how to get started, um, please send me an email. Um, I'm more than happy to help you. And if, if you're not on Workplace yet, of course, um, go to the Workplace for Good website, um, and this is where you can sign up uh, free of charge. Or again, just send me an email. Very easy. Okay. Can I just add to, to what Annette is saying about the many ideas? <clears throat> We've seen that getting this basic bot out in the hands of colleagues, they come up with a lot of amazing ideas of how they can, how we could apply bots to make all kind of functions uh, easier. Of course, not all can be done, and a lot of functions have to be, the best functions to make, to automate is rule-bound functions, but uh, it's not for, for one person or two persons to sit and, and think of what we can do with bots. But, Make a basic bot, get it out in the hands of colleagues, and listen to what comes back. Then pick uh, one I like, especially was a, a Jan Egerland bot. But uh, we'll see. <laughs> Very good. And then just start uh, in, uh, impersonating real people. The things get uh, really interesting. Uh, no, I, I, this is super fascinating. I um, can just imagine all the different use cases to create this new type of user interface. Um, and, and I'm thinking, you know, this is this is a kind of a chatbot type of user interface. Um, are you uh, able to also, or are you thinking about using voice control for, for this so people ultimately could talk to these bots rather than just uh, either click buttons or typing? We are not there yet. I'm not sure if it's possible. I guess it is. Um, yeah, why not? Why not? Um, another thing is, is using pictures, maybe, to answer also. Um, some people would like to use more integrating multimedia as an answer to our B-Bot. So, yeah, bring it on. So, Annette, we don't want you to spill any beans here, but uh, any any uh, um, voice activation or voice interaction capabilities with these bots yet? In the, in the same way as it works for like uh, on, on on Messenger or so, like whatever your 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 phone can translate from voice into then kind of text into into content. I'm pretty sure a, a bot developer can use um, for sure. And I think that's something that uh, Peter mentioned earlier. Um, one really key principle is that people don't like to type text on a on a mobile phone. So um, instead of giving them just a free text entry field, using bot, uh, using buttons sorry, is very important, and it's a very simple way um, so to to just give options, um, and that might even be a, a good first start before you're you're kind of trialing and working on voice recognition. But I'm pretty sure one of the, um, the bot platform developers would be happy to to build something with voice recognition. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. Uh, well, you've generated quite a bit of buzz and uh, interest in, with the audience here, and I'm sure people that are listening to the recording uh, will also um, be intrigued and uh, eager to get started. So uh, it remains, remains for me to thank you both, Annette and Peter, for very, very interesting content, and to the audience for great questions and good interaction. And we'll close off here. We look forward to seeing you back in uh, some of our NetApp Solutions Center uh, webinars in the future. So um, have a great re rest of your day, and uh, we'll see you again soon. Take care, everyone. Thank you so much, Frederick. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, Thanks all. Thank you all. Bye-bye.